<sighs> Hi everybody, welcome to, to my channel. Um, this is my first video um, I am ever making, have ever made for YouTube. Um, so I just wanted to start off by introducing myself. So my name is Tessa. Um, one of the reasons I'm starting this YouTube channel is because of my education interest, um, research interest. So I completed my undergrad um, in criminal justice. I'm currently in my master's uh, program completing that in sociology, criminology, and one of my biggest interests for research is um, violent crime, specifically serial murder. So that's one of the biggest reasons I'm making this YouTube channel. So I will be talking about serial murder, violent crimes, um, I'll include all of that, so not just serial murder. So my first video, this video, is going to be on Henry Louis Wallace, um, also known as the Taco Bell Strangler. Um, he was located in Charlotte, North Carolina, which is where I completed my undergrad. Um, at UNC Charlotte, so I'm going to start with a little background information on Henry Louis Wallace. Uh, I've seen some different things um, on, or some different information on how many victims he's murdered. I've seen 9, 10, and 11, but I'm going to go with 9 because um, I have an article, um, a scholarly article that says that, so I'd rather go with that than just what the internet says so he had nine victims um all black women uh, he's currently on death row at the central prison in raleigh and uh, a little bit on how he looks he's a really big guy he's six feet tall at least um he i believe most of his life he was around 200 pounds now he's a really big guy um, he got up to, I believe, around 300 pounds. But I'll start with um, him being born and all the information surrounding that. So he was born November 4th in 1965 in Barnwell, South Carolina. Um, he was born to Lottie Mae Wallace. Uh, excuse me if I say any names wrong. Um, his mom was strict and very low on patience. Um, she resented life and when she had her two kids that didn't really change so she first had Yvonne that's her oldest child um, she was born about three years before Henry and then she had Henry um, the father of those two was a married school teacher and he did not stay with them he went back to his wife um, Lottie his mother she worked at a textile mill she worked very long hours, um, constantly working to provide for her family, um, though they were very poor. Um, their home did not have electricity or plumbing. Um, they actually had a house and like a little building in the back where they kept pots for the plumbing. So. Um, Henry and his sister lived with his mom and their great-grandmother. Um, they were, like I said, they were poor. Henry grew up wearing hand-me-downs from his older sister when his clothes got too small. Um, the environment he grew up in was, like I said, a very punishable environment. It was harsh. Um, if him or her sister ever got in trouble and their mom just had too long of a day, they would have to go pick up their whips from outside, um, so tree branches, and then they would hit each other. And Henry later makes a point to say that, um, that always hurt his feelings whenever he had to hit his sister. That hurt him more than when his sister would hit him. So he did not like the... Him, he did not like having to do that to his sister. He'd rather be beaten. Um, so, Henry's father was not in the picture. Um, but he would see his friends with their father. So, he really longed for that connection. 
and one day he actually received a call from his father promising that he would stop by so he skipped school stayed home all day watched all the cars pass by waiting for his father and he never showed so he would stay the next day and then that happened i believe a couple more days but he still never showed um going on to high school oh that was when he was in sixth grade by the way so going on to high school he went to barnwell high school uh he was very popular uh this was also in 1979 just to give you a time frame um he was on the student council committee and he was also a cheerleader uh so his he wanted to play football but his mother would not let him so he just figured cheerleading was the next best thing he joined the team he was very popular his uh teammates the girls would say he's well mannered and very sweet um so in school he did make it through high school so like i said he made it through high school and he graduated in 1983 while he was in high school he wasn't the brightest but he was able to make it through um after graduating he went on to attend a technical uh college and then he only spent one semester there then he went to south carolina state college he also only spent one semester there he ended up dropping out not because he didn't have the ability he just didn't have the drive to complete it um and also at this time he did work as a dj at barnwell radio station he did end up getting fired because he was caught stealing cds after this he ended up joining the navy um this was in december of 1984 he joined the U.S. Naval Reserve in Orlando, Florida. It's claimed that um, he did exactly what he was supposed to do. There was never any problems. He was a nice guy. Um, they described him as an outstanding seaman. <clears throat> he remained there for eight years. While he was in the Navy in 1985, I believe, he married his high school classmate where um, he had dated her on and off during high school. Her name was Moretta Brabham. She had a daughter and before she even met Henry again um, and he became her stepdad. He was fine with it. He was happy about it. But he did always want a child of his own which caused some suffering within their marriage. Um, Moretta did not want to have another child. She didn't want to have any more children actually. And not long after they got married, he began using drugs. Um, his drug of choice was crack cocaine. To pay for this, um, he would burglarize homes and businesses. While he was stationed in Washington State, there were warrants for his arrest um, for burglary. In 1988, he was arrested and pled guilty to second degree burglary for breaking into a hardware store. He was sentenced to two years of probation. Um, his parole officer claims he missed most of his mandatory meetings. In 1992, he was arrested for breaking and entering. Um, and that while he was in the Navy, he had a pretty clean record. Um, so they were able to dishonorably discharge him for that. Um, when they found out about his criminal activity, that's when they discharged him. But since his... Um, when... The Navy found out about his criminal activity. He was discharged, but since he was a pretty good guy while he was in the Navy, they were able to dishonorably discharge him. That was in 1992, so during this time when he moved back home, um, Moretta actually left him, took her, took her daughter, um, and then Henry moved back with his mom and sister. And they had actually moved to Charlotte, North Carolina, which is where he committed his crimes. So he w he moved to Charlotte, North Carolina. So during this time, um, after him and Moretta had um, separated, he was seeing different women, um, you know, sleeping around with different women. In 1993, he got a woman pregnant. So he, he was really happy about this. He became a dad to a little girl. Her name was Kendra. Um, him and her mother did not stay together, though. So, to go on to his murders, um, this started in 1992, June of 1992. His first victim was Caroline Love. 
So she was actually reported as a missing person because there was no body found. Um, on the 15th of June in 1992, she had left work from Bojangles. Um, Anthony Rice uh, attested to this. He was the manager at Bojangles. She had traded a $10 bill for quarters so she could do a little laundry when she got home. Uh, her cousin, Robert Ross, uh, drove her back to her place that night, saw her go into her foyer, and nothing seemed off or suspicious. Um, when the police searched the apartment, so it was reported that she was missing. She hadn't gone to work in a couple of days. So the police went and searched her apartment. It seemed there was um, a scuffle in the apartment, so they were suspicious. But she was still just reported as a missing person. The furniture in her apartment was uh, moved slightly. The sheets on her bed were not on her bed, and they were not in the dirty clothes hamper. Um, she had actually never even got to do her laundry, and the roll of quarters were not in her apartment. So they just classified her as a missing person. They just assumed she was a runaway, and her body would not be found until two years later. The next victim, which was eight months later on February 19th, 1993, was Sylvia Sumter. Uh, she came home from work, prepared to make a dinner for herself and her daughter, Shauna. Um, she couldn't find her daughter. Um, she went to Piedmont Central Community College, but her coat and her purse were still in her room, which was off to her, because if you're a girl, you don't go anywhere without your purse. Um, she called Shauna's boyfriend, Daryl Kirkpatrick, and he hadn't seen her all day. And then she called the local Taco Bell, uh, where she worked part-time, to see if she had been in, but they told her that she wasn't on schedule to work. Shauna also never ended up picking up her um, godson from from school or from daycare. I'm not sure which one. Um, the boyfriend went over to the house to see um, the mom to calm her down. And so he was looking through the house, looking for anything that could tell him anything about where Shauna was. And there was uh, water. There, the carpet was soaked. And the shower curtain wasn't tucked in place so something was off and he could see something in in the bathtub through the curtain and as he opened it he saw shauna in a tub of water her head was um under the water and her eyes were open she was pronounced dead at the hospital uh, she had skull lacerations and bruising uh, she was hit with something dull and very heavy the thing that she was hit with was not the thing that killed her, though it might have rendered her unconscious. She was actually strangled to death. They could tell this from um, hemorrhaging in the eyes, in the lips, and in the voice box. She was, her case was um, defined as a homicide. They interviewed friends, co-workers, classmates, and they couldn't find the suspect or a motive. Later, um, Audrey Spain was also killed. Her, she was 24 years old. She was um, dependable. She worked at Taco Bell. Um, she never showed up for work June 23rd and 24th of 1993, um, which was weird because she was very dependable. Um, when her manager tried to call her, she, it was just um, sent to voicemail. When no one could get a hold of Audrey Spain, um, her sister uh, went to her apartment where her car was still there. She knocked on the door. There was no answer. Uh, she got a janitor to let her in. She went to the bedroom and she saw Audrey laying up across the bed. She was naked. Um, her, they say her face was distorted, her eyes were bulged, and she looked, they, they described it as frozen. Um, her t-shirt and her bra were wrapped around her neck, and she was strangled to death. And she had also been raped. 
this point, there were three victims, Caroline Love, Shauna Hawk, and Audrey Spain. Um, Caroline was reported as missing. Shauna and Audrey were, were um, murdered, uh, classified as homicides, and they were both strangulations. No one had made the connection yet that all three of them knew someone in common, which was Henry Louis Wallace. Um, he had actually spent some time working at Taco Bell while he was in Charlotte. Um, he was very nice. He knew a lot of women, and they all described him as sweet. But still, he had not been questioned by anybody. The fourth victim was Valencia Jumper. She was a 19-year-old college student. Uh, she had moved from Columbia, South Carolina, and she also worked at Food Lion um, to help pay for her tuition. In August of 1993, um, she was killed by Henry Louis Wallace, of course. On August 9th, her boyfriend, Zachary Douglas, had come over to visit her. Um, there was something burning, and once he got in, there was something on fire in the apartment. Um, she was already strangled. Um, there and. It was a pretty small apartment, so the fire was able to move quickly. Uh, something had been lit on a gas burner, which caused the fire. And she was sleeping on her bed, supposedly, and she was severely burned. Um, and they say that she had died of thermal burns, which was wrong. So it was actually... They, they ended up... Um, saying this was an accident, saying that she was just a drunk college student who left, I believe it was Beanie Weenies on the stove, but my teacher at um, UNC Charlotte, her name is, I believe you say Charisse Costin, um, she has interviewed Henry Louis Wallace plenty of times, and um, she said that Henry claimed the murder l way later, um, he had strangled her and raped her, and said Beanie Weenies on the stove to make it look like it was an accident. So her cause of death was later changed from um, thermal burns to strangulation. The next victim was Michelle Stinson. She died on September 15th, which was five weeks after um, Valencia died. So it was a little different um, than how Valencia died. Along with this being different from Valencia's death, it was also different from all the women's death. So she was strangled. Uh, she also had a couple kids in the apartment. She was strangled and she was also stabbed to death, which was a lot different. Um, about half a year later, on February 20th, 1994, um, Vanessa Mack was murdered. Uh, she had a kid in the apartment, and her mom, Barbara, came to pick up her kid, just like she did every Sunday, um, so um, Vanessa could go to work. Uh, something was a little different. Um, the door was ajar, and um, Vanessa's four-month-old child was sleeping on the couch, wearing the same clothes as they were wearing the day before. Um, her mom was looking all around the apartment for her. She could not find her. And she realized that in the bedroom, what she thought was just a bundle of covers was actually Vanessa. She had been strangled and she was partially undressed. Um, she was strangled with a pillowcase. Uh, Henry also said that he felt remorse after every murder. He would stay in after he would kill just in case the police had any suspicions about him. Um, there was there were not any suspicions on him like I said earlier he was talkative um, he would he smiled constantly he talked to everyone people liked him um the second week in March of 1994 is when he started to get really messy so he started out as an organized killer and he became a disorganized killer this is usually from drug abuse or alcohol abuse in his case I believe I believe it was drug abuse so there were three murders within three days. So this was between March 9th and 11th. Um, the the cops were working diligently on um, finding this murderer. Um, so he became messy. He stopped wiping off fingerprints. Um, he used to bathe some of the victims. 
he stopped this and um he would go jewel riding after he would kill instead of staying in like he used to do on march 9th betty Falcom didn't show up to work she worked at bojangles as an assistant manager um she would never miss work so it was very weird for her to miss work um when her apartment was searched they found her um the maintenance man found her she was fully clothed face down on her bed and she was choked to death by a towel that was twisted into a noose um she had been dead for more than 24 hours when she was found um i believe it was that day or the day after the police were called to that same apartment complex where she lived um Brandy Henderson had been killed. Um, her boyfriend found her. Um, she had towels around her neck, so she had been strangled. And the 10-month-old um, toddler of her, her child, was in his room. He was barely alive, but he was, he did end up being fine. It's interesting to look at how Henry Louis Wallace was never questioned or suspected until the end. Uh, when we look at the victims, so Henry knew all of them. Um, I believe it was all of them, if not most of them. Um, Shauna and Audrey had once worked at Taco Bell, where Henry also worked. Valencia Jumper was friends with Henry's sister, Yvonne. Uh, Michelle Stinson um, would eat at Taco Bell and chat with Henry. Vanessa Mack was the sister of one of um, Henry's ex-girlfriends. Betty Balcom was a friend of Henry's current girlfriend, which was Sadie McKnight at the time. And as for Brandy, um, her boyfriend found her. His name was Vernus Lamar Woods. Henry was friends with him. As Henry started being suspected as the killer, they would interview his girlfriend, Sadie McKnight, and she was actually seen wearing the jewelry of the dead victims. And once they found Betty, Betty's car, um they found a whole handprint from henry on the car that he never ended up cleaning henry was arrested he was questioned they actually have videos of him um he admitted to everything he did he admitted to um all of the murders even his first one um which the police didn't know they had they didn't know and um he also um let everyone know let the detectives know what his motivations were so that wasn't for money it wasn't for any type of theft but it was um solely sexual um motivation so he had uh fantasies of being in power being in control which most serial murderers do there's usually a sexual drive there which henry definitely possessed um so, he had a crack habit, um, he used drugs, sex was one of the reasons, so he did want to escape from that, and then um, the drugs just ended up getting him caught in the end. He was initially charged in 1994, um, so he, in 1998, he actually met um, a prison nurse, and he married her, her name is Rebecca Torrijas, and, um, she was the nurse of Henry. As of today, he is on death row. He, like I said at the beginning, he is located at Central Prison in Raleigh. And um, that's pretty much the case of Henry Lewis Wallace, also known as the Taco Bell Strangler. I'll include pictures, um, and I'll also include a link down below of a documentary that's... I watched it while I was in school. Um, it's called Bad Henry. It's on Prime Video. I believe it's a couple dollars and I believe there's two parts to it, but it's worth watching if you're interested in it. In it.